everybody and welcome to the 90 minute art challenge my name is bobby chu i will be your host and we also have my co-host masay seki and guest artist cj ellison holy smokes this is gonna be fun and we got a funny little fun little bunny to paint today uh so how does this work how does this work well let me show you first what we want to do is go to the tumblr page and Sorry, I'm gonna do something a little clunky here. Uh, Cause something just moved, I don't know why. Okay, there we go, Tumblr page. If you look up 90 Min Art Challenge on Tumblr, you will find our Tumblr page. And in this Tumblr page, you will find today's challenge. Okay, it's a fun little bunny. Uh, photographed by Sean McKee, and you can follow that person right there. Also, you can see all the previous fun challenges that we had, okay? Mm -hmm. And then what you wanna do is when you're done your challenge, uh, when you're done your painting, what you wanna do is upload it to Instagram and hashtag it 90 Min Art Challenge. And um, here's a great example. Who is this? Wow, what did she do? <laughs> oh my gosh, so amazing. This is CJ <laughs> Ellison's uh, page. And you can see that she is hardcore with the 90 Minute Art Challenge. And you could kind of tell from the growth and you know the quality of her work. So it's fantastic to see. Now, why don't we go to the other challenges here? And you can see all of them if you just type in hashtag 90 Minute Art Challenge into Instagram. But I chose a few that I want to kind of spotlight because that's what we do. We spotlight each time. Look at this. This is really nice. It looks like there's a bit yeah. of a, like the person used a fur custom brush to do the grass or something. It's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Right, and then this one was actually a tough one. This was kind of tough for me. It was a portrait of uh, David Attenborough, Sir David Attenborough. That was, that was a nice one. Um, this one was extremely tough. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Wizard Bunny didn't think so, but I could, <laughs> could barely finish it. Here's another one of the same uh, subject, a different style, very, very different mm -hmm. style. And I appreciate that, you know, it doesn't need to look all the same. It's really whatever you want to do. But this is a nice likeness, I thought. So I could mm. put this there. Yeah, the face looks good. Yeah. And then some kind of mech oh, cool. kind of thing. That's pretty cool. That was the 90 minute art challenge that we did with Router Tulp. And then this is something that's a bit more representational of the subject. So way mm -hmm. to go, everybody. That was fantastic. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is Discord. We have our Discord group here. If you go to the bottom of the, the page uh, or the screen here, you can see Discord and the address bit.ly slash LBX Discord. And you can find the link in the description of this video, I believe. Uh, next thing I want to kind of ask is really, okay, Bunny, this is our subject, and every time we have a subject, we must go to the almighty, the all powerful uh, wizard bunny to get a rating and see how tough is today's challenge. So why don't we go and do that right now? Hmm. To paint to such beauty is nearly impossible. impossible. I give you a challenge. challenge. A Amazing. Yes. Our first nine. Whoa. Our first nine. <laughs> yeah. That's impressive. All right. Well, let's see how we do, everybody. We got 90 minutes to complete an illustration based off of this uh, painting here. Now, in this one in particular, I just want to mention that um, in the previous ones, most of them, you could see all of our cursors, but you could never see what functions we're clicking on, what kind of colors we're using, things like that. So in this one, I want to do it slightly different where I'm, cop I'm screen grabbing uh, my view, right? So you, can, you can't see my little name tag, but you can see my highlight, my cursor, 
and the colors that I'm choosing and the functions and things like that. So, you know what? Let me know in the comments which one you like better. Do you like the ones where you just see all of our cursors or do you like to see something where you can see what I'm doing? Because what happens is I start to zoom in and out as well and you won't be able to see as much of the other people's paintings sometimes. I was very cognizant of that though, don't worry. CJ Massey. I, I, <laughs> no worries. I tried to back out as much as possible constantly. Um, but yeah, I would love to see like a thumbs up if you like this more or a thumbs down if you just like to see all the cursors, uh, you know, all the time and just one still view. Uh, you know, and then you could give some feedback. Okay, so thumbs up if you like this one, thumbs down if you liked the previous version. Okay. Now, uh, next thing I want to talk about here before we go on any further, this is, you know, it's not like it's sponsored by, but I do own Schoolism, and Schoolism is having an amazing sale, $100 off a year of education and the regular price is only just shy of two hundred dollars so that means with the sale you can or sorry three hundred dollars three hundred dollars two hundred ninety eight dollars or something two hundred ninety nine dollars and forty cents I believe and then for the sale you get a year subscription for actually a uh, hundred ninety eight dollars so a hundred dollars off thirty like a third off it's it's pretty amazing and that gives you gives you access to everybody's courses uh, over 35 courses soon to be 40 courses um, I think next week we're gonna add another course to the subscription so get on that because we only have like two sales a year yeah get on it <laughs> so I see a bunch of like thumbs up thumbs down thumbs down um, there's a mix of thumbs to, up and thumbs yeah <laughs> that one has a bit of a mixed result there mm -hmm. um yeah so why don't we hop onto discord do you want to do that yeah sounds yeah good. let's do it okay great so we'll mute our zoom please mute our zoom and then we'll hop onto discord all right hey everybody Hey, Discord people. Um, so while everybody kind of gathers their thoughts and gets settled and starts the challenge and everything, I figured now might be a good time to go and hop into um, some of the questions on Slido. If you want to ask questions as well, you can see at the bottom of the screen it says questions and has an address there. We use Slido.com, hashtag ChooStream, and you could Type in whatever questions you want and upvote them if you like as well. Okay, so the very first one is from Adriano. You guys have any advice to improve mark making like brush strokes, edge control? I feel like I do hundreds of marks and none of them seem expressive. Interesting. Why don't we go to our guest for CJ? Do you have any thoughts about this? Oh. Any? <laughs> Um, yeah, I actually have, I have two suggestions. Um, one of them is just something that I kind of discovered on my own is uh, slow down. Because usually what I find when my marks aren't working is because I'm not really thinking about what I'm doing. I'm just kind of going through the motions. It's kind of almost just noodling it until it looks right. Um, so if you're having trouble with your brush strokes, really just kind of like slow down and think about what you're doing with the brush. What are the settings doing it? What are they affecting? Um, and let's really, really pay attention to what you're doing. Um, it can be frustrating when you start doing that because obviously you're going to start painting a lot slower. Um, but sometimes to move faster, you got to move slower first. So I found that helped a lot. And the second suggestion is actually what I've been doing recently is I'm taking Bobby's class on schoolism. He talks a lot about working with brush strokes. Um, no way. I did not plant yeah. this, by the way. I did no, not I know. Did. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't think I never told you either, but that is, that's the one I'm working my way through right now because um, I started digital painting by not taking digital painting courses. Um, so I've gotten to a point where it's like, 
you know, maybe I should, you know, learn how digital painting actually works. Um, so I started with Bobby's and if anyone's been following Spore, everyone knows he has his certain way of using the brushes that's very, very specific and works really well. So I've been trying to unlock that. So a lot of good suggestions in that class. Thanks so much, CJ. That's, yeah. that's really nice. <laughs> wow. Surprise, surprise plug there. <laughs> I could definitely vouch for that too, because that's how yeah. I it as well. And yeah, <laughs> now it's interesting because um, I've been using the brush in a few different ways now. So that that is one, like in the course, I teach a very specific way of using the brush, which is a way where I found was very specific to me. I didn't really see too many other people using digital painting in that way, the brush in that way. Mm -hmm. um, but I also, I love learning. I love doing all the other classes. So I do use the brush in many other ways, but I felt that those other ways, I learned them from somebody else. And you know, you could take Craig's, Craig Mullen's class or something if you want to learn a couple of the other ways I use my brush. But um, yeah, it just felt funny if I taught somebody else's thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I really like that course. I thank you. I, I worked really hard on it to take everything that I learned over the past, you know, couple decades to put that together. Did you get to the yeah. flying hippo yet? Probably not, not yet. yet. I'm on I'm on lesson six right now. I'm on the sketching lesson. Those are um, yeah, I really yeah, I really liked um, putting those together, really talking about yeah, those, the thoughts. Yeah, those ones were especially good because um, even though you know, I always expect to learn something, but I went into it like, surely I know how to sketch. This won't be hard. This won't take too long. No, I've been like two weeks on that one. It one's tripping me up, but it's good. I'm definitely getting a lot out of it. I put in some bonus ones in there too of like... That's the one I'm stuck on. I'm stuck on that <laughs> landscape at the end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because I put in one where I think there's a picture of London, um, yeah. downtown London. There's about 80 people in the photo. Buildings, there's like multiple buildings. One building is casting a giant shadow onto the street and all this stuff. And I think it's like 20 minutes, right? Painted in 20 yeah. minutes. Yeah, paint everything. Well, not, you know, gotta be choose what you're painting but yeah you got 20 minutes to do all of that and it, it is kicking my butt <laughs> it's an awesome uh exercise it is good that, yeah. oh absolutely and it really kind of aligns with this too so you know if you are not in the course which i would love to see if anybody has actually taken any of the schoolism courses I'd love to see uh what emoji should they put out <laughs> for if they took a schoolism course let's say um What's a fun emoji? I guess the two hands, the two hands going up. Yeah, two hands. Yeah, two, two hands, hands going up. <laughs> if you took a schoolism class before. Um, but yeah, if you haven't taken a schoolism class, hey, you could take these things, the 90 minute art challenge. This is one of the reasons that we do it because uh, it gives anybody uh, opportunity to learn and paint and all that stuff. But of course, if you want to get very specific and if you, if you want to get really into it and get serious about it, schoolism uh, subscriptions all the way. Now, um, we got to talk about this painting a bit. We've all taken different approaches. I remember seeing CJ is already on the bunny and I'm like thinking I need to get the bunny going. Do you guys remember any of the thoughts that were going through your head? at this, around this stage, in the beginning? Um, yeah, yeah, I can go. I remember at, at the very beginning, I looked at the reference and what I liked most about it was the, the bunny, especially the light on the bunny. So I was, I was thinking to myself, like, I'm gonna make that the focus. I'm gonna make the bunny not nice and big and maybe not focus on the background as well, as much. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I kind of went into the bunny a lot earlier. Um, but also watching you guys, I'm like, maybe I should be spending more time on the background. <laughs> I'm doing too much work on the background. <laughs> Am I ignoring it too much? Oh, uh, yeah, that's what was going through my head. Yeah, it's good that you went, you were like focused on your approach. Yeah. What about you, Missy? Um, Do you remember? 
for me, when I saw it, um, even though the the bunny was the main focus, I actually really liked the way the the um, grass in the distance was kind of blurred out with the the, the bokeh. So I was thinking like, okay, with the I I don't remember if I just decreased the density and the opacity, or if I just made, used the soft brush. But I remember just enjoying that process because it's like. I'm not trying to make it accurate, but I'm like also trying like trying to make it like suggestive that like you know this is really far in the distance, mm -hmm. and rather than focusing on like sharp edges and stuff, I, it feels a bit more freeing and like loose. So, um, and then I knew that like okay, this is the first step I want to take, and then I want to build on top of that by adding like more uh, crisp lines and uh, edges and. Yeah, I think, so I think that's what I was thinking in the beginning. One of the things I found very interesting about this subject, because it could be looked at as like, this is kind of a simple subject. You don't even have the full body of the rabbit or anything, um, even though capturing its beauty is nearly impossible, just like the yeah. wizard has said. But um, <laughs> I like the texture, the grass because I didn't want to use a textured brush really, right? I just wanted to, well, actually I am using it, a slightly textured brush, <laughs> okay. um, but not like a grass texture. Yeah. yeah, it's not like a grass texture. Thank you yeah. for rescuing me. And it's not like um, an extremely textural brush. It doesn't, the brush does not have texture on it, but the brush shape can create something that feels like a texture. Right, the tech, there's no texture baked into the brush, in other words. Um, so to do the grass texture, I thought that's a pretty cool, challenging thing. And the other thing that was extremely challenging, that's so subtle, but I don't know how you guys felt about it. It's like both of those ears, you can see heavy subsurface scattering, light going through the ear, lighting it up nice and orangey uh, red, but one of those ears, you're looking at the other side, right? You're not looking into the ear. Mm -hmm. I thought yeah. getting that across was extremely difficult because it's hard to really figure out from the photo itself. Don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. If, you watch, if you watch at the end of the video, I come back to the ears and that's the exact thing I'm struggling with at the end. That, that was, I think that was probably the toughest part about the bunny. Yeah, I remember zooming into the photo. I'm like, what is that? Is that the other ear turned around so they're both facing in the same direction? But it wasn't. Yeah. That was actually my favorite part. Oh. Because it was like just so saturated and mm -hmm. like it's the, the color is like completely opposite from the whole like everything else in it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Just and the vein it, in the ear was like like wow that's so weird but you know like i i get it <laughs> did you get a chance to put in the little veins in the ears i i remember specifically like okay i only have a couple minutes left gotta get those veins in the ears <laughs> i think in the end i do yeah yeah i remember looking at all of them at the end and like i'm like man this Masse nailed the ears oh now for me, I was trying to paint something totally representational of the subject, right? And um, CJ, you already, from the very start, you just mentioned, yeah, I wanted to really focus on the bunny, yeah. right? So the proportions, the, the composition and everything, it doesn't match. It's obvious that you enlarge the bunny, you want to put more, mm -hmm. more focus on it. I just wanted to paint it straight really concentrating on trying to capture the texture with a loose kind of brush movement. Uh, Masse, did you have any specific objectives with this one in particular? Like things that you want to change or were you trying to go for more of a exact representation? Um, I think I was, I was going for more of a exact representation because I wasn't really used to that kind of uh, you know, having like a lot of uh, blurred stuff in the back and like trying to focus on the bunny. 
Um, yeah, so <laughs> I kind of just copied, not exactly, uh, but tried to get as accurately as possible to the photo. Now, CJ, I know um, sometimes it can be a little intimidating to paint with Masse and I, especially <laughs> when we've been doing it for like consistently, you know, yeah. constantly, <laughs> right? Did you feel any intimidation now that, you know, we could talk freely yeah. about this? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, th I'm glad that we were painting because definitely like right before we started, I was just the most nervous. <laughs> oh. I, was, I was not, and like, it's nothing that you guys are the, so fun nice to be around, but like, I was like, not cool about it all. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like once once I got painting, it's like okay, like I like I paint all the time. It's like okay, I was focused and like we do magma boards all the time on light boxes. Like I just kind of got back into the rhythm of what I normally do, so that took down the anxiety quite a bit there. Well, and also you got the bunny before us. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that helps, yeah, what, right? Yeah, if nothing else, at least I got the subject down. So <laughs> it's a, you're way ahead of us. <laughs> I had that going for me, so you know, even if the painting's a disaster, well, the bunny's there, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember I was like, oh man, CJ's way ahead of us. Like I gotta hurry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was I'm like, I'm the opposite. I'm like, oh man, like I know I don't want to focus on my background, but my background just looks like a blur of nothingness. <laughs> Now for the regulars, for the uh, 90 Mac regulars in the stream, they know that um, lots of times I talk about, oh man, I see Massey pulling ahead, I'm getting all nervous and stuff. Well, you know, pretty much that nervousness has gone away now. Because I've been in the fire so many times. Yeah. You know, it's not like I'm doing so much better even though I feel improvement, it's just that when people get ahead, I don't feel anything that I felt before because I, I've been there. I know things will work work out. Yeah. That's what's really nice about these because I know we do them so often, there's a lot of them I'll be working on. Like, you'll be halfway through, I'm like, I don't think this painting is working at all. But you're so used to it, you just kind of just keep plowing forward and then you know a lot of times it will come together at the end. You just kind of kind of keep going with it. Yeah, and um, we're going to be doing even more. Like, Missy and I have been talking. If we can do more than two a week, would you guys want that? You know, give us some hearts emojis if you, if you would be down to really... Because it's like, that is what you need to do, right? Two times a week, really, to, to get the brush out, to do some art. It's not, it's not really enough. It just isn't, I'm sorry, you know, but um, if you do do it regularly, you will see such growth like what Masse and I have been seeing, and it's just been so amazing. So I know it might be challenging for some people to follow along and keep doing these things, um, but we kind of want to encourage people to do that, right? So. We're also going to experiment with different times as well. So we're going to have the Monday and Thursday. That's going to be locked in, right? 9.30 Eastern Time, New York Time, 6.30 a.m. Pacific Time, L.A. Time. But we're also going to do some uh, later in the day so that other people can have an easier time joining as well. Some of these things coming up, it's going to be awesome. Today's what? Today's Thursday. I barely remember anymore. But, um, oh, thanks for all the hearts, everybody. Right on. Okay, we are pumped to do even more of these. Uh, Monday, this was an extremely tough one. You don't even see the full image here. This one with, with Hari from Indonesia. Oh, boy. That was yeah. a very, very tough one. Um, yeah, that was actually, I think that's my favorite. Uh, from all the challenges that we've done. It's definitely one of mine too because <laughs> I really liked it because I painted maybe one third of it upside down and oh. it was still actually pretty accurate when I flipped it back and then um, getting his face right, Forrest Whitaker, 
I, I felt like, yeah, mm -hmm. it does look like him. So I was, I was happy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> But with a distinctive face like that, it's not yeah. hard. It's not as hard, <laughs> right? Yeah. Anyhow, that's going to be on Monday. And then, um, what's on Thursday? Because I know. Thursday is with Eric Canetti. Eric Canetti from Riot Games, yeah. everybody. Yeah. That challenge is going to be a bit different. Um, so we're going to be taking uh, four references and doing like a art mashup challenge. Uh, inspired by Mindy Lee's um, mashup art challenge. Yes. Uh, so this one, people can get like really creative. It, it's kind of good to add these kinds of things because um, at a certain point when you do all these like reference uh, studies, you want you want to take it a step further and make it you know, your own and try to take reference to put into your personal work. So hopefully when people see that uh, challenge, they're going to understand like This is what artists do with reference. They take inspiration from that and then, you know, make it into an original artwork. Yes, uh, very difficult. Mindy Lee, I am looking for you. I am going to reach out to you <laughs> to also do this challenge with us at a different time. Hopefully mm -hmm. you're down since um, I really learned about this challenge from your Instagram page. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's another thing going on? Oh, yeah, next week also, special time. We will announce it when we have it finalized, but it will be on next Friday. Not tomorrow, but next Friday. The almighty, the all-powerful Carla Ortiz. Whoa. Oh my gosh. You know, designed Doctor Strange, worked on Rogue One, worked on Jurassic World, worked on, you know, working on Marvel stuff constantly. She's going to be coming out painting with us, too. Mm -hmm. That's going to be amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited because there's been a there's a few subjects that Masay and I have been storing that are that we just find extremely difficult and just haven't really found a good opportunity to do those mm -hmm. so i kind of want to do one of those say i don't know how you feel yeah yeah I, i i can't promise i'll be painting because i might be just watching <laughs> just watching <laughs> i'll just like just watch and put some strokes <laughs> yeah but a lot of really cool things coming up everybody um So stay tuned and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. There's also constant videos that I'm putting out um, of just paintings, just paintings when I'm not doing these paintings and talking about those too. And then we always do these Q and A's in Discord right after. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's about time we say hi to the Discord community, right? They've been patiently just listening away mm -hmm. and everything. <laughs> Hey everybody, do you, you guys want to join in in any of this uh, conversation here? Hi, I think um, I just woke up, but I just <laughs> caught the bottom end of the conversation and I just wanted to ask what time was uh, the next Friday's painting session? The Friday painting section session for next week, I'm not totally sure. I will get back to you about that. I think, I think, I think it's... It's around 12, 1230 New York time. Um, yeah, it's going to be later in the day because Carla's in. Oh, right. So or maybe like afternoon. Our maybe. Time. Yeah, it's more like 334 p.m. Anyways, that's another good reason to subscribe to this channel because then you <laughs> won't miss them. Right. And turn on your notifications if you want to be extra paranoid and you won't miss them for sure. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. CJ, you're already doing that rim light. You know, that rim light is like, it's it's very much kind of like the icing on the cake, right? Yeah. Like everything seems kind of dull until you put that little bit of rim light on, little highlights or whatever. Like when you look at Masay and I, our paintings look extremely unfinished because we don't have that rim light. 
However, I tend to uh, have that kind of stuff be one of the last things I paint. Right? Mm -hmm. What about you, Missy? Because mm -hmm. you look like you're holding back. Do you always kind of hold back? Yeah, I because it's the icing on the cake and because it's like the tastiest part, I actually wait till the very end. It's like eating, it's like in a, uh, it's like a dinner plate. You try to eat all the vegetables first and then you get to like the really good stuff or like you wait for the dessert. So uh, for me, um, the rim lighting and like the, the little highlights are what um, I try to uh, hold back at the very end so that um, you know that's what I'm looking forward for the uh, for too, and that's what I work towards. So that by the end, even though I was like struggling with the painting, at least I feel good doing this part to make it feel like you know, it's like oh, this was so worth it. So that's just me personally. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, any difficulties that you remember with this uh, challenge, or anything that? Yeah, difficulties and how would you kind of tackle things differently next time if you're to tackle the same subject? Like for me, it's really the background colors, it's like two colors and that's really annoying because it doesn't look natural. Mm -hmm. The texture kind of mm -hmm. looks kind of natural, right? Anything on your sides? I think what I would have done, um, just because I went so blurry with the background, is I actually, I think I would have separated the background out onto its own layer, um, so I could refine it a little bit more about the bunny, because I was working on one layer, because that's how I normally work when, I use a mag when I'm using magma, um, so I thought I would try it out for this one, but for this particular subject, I'm like, mm, probably would have been better if I definitely put that on a different layer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, I kind of felt the the fur was kind of confusing when I first uh, started the painting because um, I understand the form I understand like how the bunny like looks like but then when it comes to like the, the fur pattern there's like very subtle uh, di like uh, things going on especially like around the neck area like the neck cheek area I was like why why is that lighter than like that part it's like Oh, I guess it's because it's like a, a lighter fur color so that that kind of threw me off a bit but <clears throat> once I tried to like break it down into like okay this is the, this form and then this area is catching this light and this one has the, the skylight then um, it was a bit easier but if I were to do it again I'd probably want to analyze it a bit more before I start painting mm. yeah totally the yeah. the fur color i see it yeah on the neck and around the eyes right like um yeah. i could see in my version i'm addressing it right away um yeah but it can get very difficult yeah i i, I feel like for me it's definitely the color variations in the background that I would tackle more and just get a, uh, just get them in um, earlier I think I do end up doing a bit of color variation in, in the end but I just wish I got them in earlier make it feel good like mm -hmm. right away why don't we go on to um, another question from Slido all right so Paul asks to continue from a oh maybe this was from last week uh, or yeah. Monday, to continue from an earlier question, any advice for how to narrow down your art career goals? Deciding between props, characters, layouts, etc. This is actually such an important question. I know it, you know, it's an important question because I get asked it so much. CJ, I'm assuming, um, I'm assuming I probably been in the industry a little longer than you so maybe you yeah, can a kind of address <laughs> <laughs> maybe you could address this question yeah um, it's, actually, it's kind of an inter interesting question because when I started in the art industry I ended up doing something that I ended up not really liking 
Um, because what I didn't do at the beginning is kind of think about what I actually wanted to be as an artist. When I got, when I left, um, when I left art school, I made the mistake of saying like, I'll just take whatever art job I can get. Um, which I think a lot of people do, because obviously you're coming right out of school, you, you do need to make money and you provide for yourself. So a lot of people do end up there, but because I did that, I ended up kind of tailoring my art career towards what other people needed me to be. Um, so I started out doing vector art, which is interesting, but isn't very personally interesting to me. And I don't really get a lot out of it. Um, I was able to do it really well because I just kept doing it and doing it. But because I was doing that, I was focusing everything I did on something that I didn't really enjoy doing at all. Um, so then I had to, you know, then I later on, I moved into um, toy design, which I like the design aspect of it, but the subjects wasn't something I was doing. So I ended up having to switch. Um, I had to really just absolutely change complete 180 on the direction. Um, if you look at my Instagram, it looks completely different. You wouldn't know that I'd started out doing vector art. Um, but I think the point of that is like, yeah, sit down and really think about what you want to do. But if you don't have an answer, you can change directions later on. Um, it, it, it probably won't be easy, but you can do it. So I think a lot of times we get caught up in the beginning of like trying to choose the perfect path. Um, and getting it all right at once, but I don't think that's how it uh, how it really happens a lot of the time. A lot of time you kind of figure yourself out as you go, um, if you can't come up with that decision right away. 100%. Yeah, we should highlight that, cut it out, and post it as its own little video, because um, <laughs> there's a lot of really good things. I, I don't really have too much to add to that. Do you have anything that you want to add to that, Masse? Mm -hmm. CJ put it perfectly. Yeah, don't don't be scared to. Don't, I I think yeah, just do. Uh, yeah, sorry, I don't want to ruin what CJ said, so I'm just gonna. Yeah. I always <laughs> pictured it kind of like, um, you know, we all get released into the wild after we graduate <laughs> or decide that we want to be an artist, and now we're fending for ourselves. And is there a perfect way to go no generally no you kind of are like little pinballs and bouncing all around and sometimes you go down yeah. most of the time you're hopefully going kind of up as long as you put in that effort and then you might go in one direction and you're learning about props and vector art and whatever and then you end up going in another direction but then that first stuff that you learned and learned to do well even though you kind of sort of liked it. I'm sure it's played um, some sort of good, positive part in your in your work now. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's the thing, because like the things you start out with, um, it's not a waste of time, even if it's not exactly what you wanted to do, um, or if you even just changed to who you were as an artist later on. Uh, they'll come back and they'll help you in ways that you can't really predict ahead of time. So that's why I just kind of, you know, try to think about what you are. But if you if you don't know who you are as an artist yet, don't worry. Just start start with something, and it'll help you later on. Cool. Um, yeah, I see a little question in the YouTube audience there. Uh, just peer it over for a second, and it says, "Is Bobby working on a project now?" Um, you yeah, know, no, I'm not. I am about to start a project with Massey. Uh, a new project, new film or whatever, but currently no. And it's been great. You know, this kind of leads into a subject that I was having with a professional friend. And we we're just talking about um, taking jobs, things like that. And for me, in the very beginning of my career, my whole goal was defense, defense, defense. How do I make my career uh, be able to withstand a lot of stuff, you know, so not getting a job, not getting the jobs that I want, um, all sorts of things like that. Like, how do I make it more and more self-sufficient? So if you look at my career and the things that I've done, it's slowly making a whole ecosystem for artists, right? Like my studio. So I have my own studio. I can't fire myself or I'd be pretty dumb to. So I got a job, that's pretty good. Education, 
right? And schoolism was the education part of things. How do I keep learning? How do I keep evolving? And then it became, well, we all need to meet. We all need to network. Networking is always like uh, some sort of topic in one of these discussions and one of these, uh, you know, streams constantly. So then Lightbox Expo, right? And then it became, well, we should have our own software as well. And that became Magma. So um, I think the one thing that, that I did well in the beginning was really just thinking of defense, defense, defense. Like, how do I make my life be able to withstand something like a pandemic? Jeez, like, thank goodness I was thinking that back then, right? And it's allowed us, not just me, but the whole studio to be able to wait for jobs. We don't have to take every job that comes to us. And a lot of times, I don't want to deter anybody <laughs> from contacting us. And sometimes we say no as well, you know, when it just doesn't fit. And then we just wait. And, it's, and we're not just waiting, we're painting, we're doing, we're improving and all sorts of stuff. But the, that freedom, that flexibility there has been key to constantly evolving, constantly improving because, you know, and CJ, I'm sure you know this as well. Sometimes we get jobs where it's like we're running on a treadmill. I've done that before. I'm not challenged by doing that. I'm not going to improve by doing that, right? And you don't want to catch yourself on the treadmill. You want to constantly be evolving in some way or another. And if you need your job, keep your job. Totally stick with your job but you're gonna to wanna to push a little harder or a bunch harder if you wanna elevate your life from that stage to the next stage. It's yeah, my little absolutely. rant for today. Yeah, actually, I've got a little bit of story about that if you've got some time. Um, so I was working I was working at a job. It was one of the jobs that I kind of mentioned earlier. I was doing toy design, and it was like that. It was an incredibly intense work environment. Um, it was basically, it was like crunch time all the time for three and a half years straight. So I was like, like the most stressed. It was insane. It was like a very, a very, a very intense work environment. Um, and I remember, it was, but on the other hand, it's because I was in that environment, I realized it's like, I thought to myself like, this, this is not how I want to work. This is, I don't want to kind of feel like I'm in survival mode all the time. And I want to be doing the projects and the things that I actually want to be working on. Um, so that's kind of actually how I um, came to find Shoestream to begin with, so like three years ago. Because um, it was funny, because back when I was in art school, I went to the Savannah College of Art and Design. Oh, no way. Um, Did I, was I there when I... That's how, no, yeah, you were. I remember, because I was, uh, I think I was like a senior, um, and I had been studying animation. And even back then, I knew that, I, okay, I probably don't want to do animation. I think I actually want to do concept art. But Glenn Keane was coming, and if you're an animator, everyone knows and loves Glenn Keane. Uh, so all my friends were going to go see Glenn Keane, but I was excited because they were, they were going to have a concept artist there. And I'd never heard of any concept artists, and I didn't know any concept artists. I was so excited. Um, so I went, and then obviously the concept artist was you. I think there was a third guy there, too, but I feel so bad. I don't remember who it was. Yeah, um, John Cars. Okay, that's right. That... I felt so bad. I only... Yeah, director, uh, Oscar-winning director of Paper Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, who was I sharing a stage with? Um, Glenn? Glenn who? Glenn Keane. Oh, yes, yes. I was sharing a stage with Glenn Keane. Yes, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was so funny because I, I remember um, I had a class that evening, and I had just gotten to class. Um, and one of my friends texted me, and she's like, oh, yeah, that Bobby Chu guy, he's going to be doing a workshop over at Montgomery Hall, the animation building. And he's going to be showing how he paints. You should totally come. I know you're interested. I'm like, oh, I want to come. But if you know anything about SCAD, um, they don't have a campus. It's all these tiny little buildings that are spread out across the um, entire city of Savannah. So to get there, I have to transfer two buses to get there. And oh, between wow. classes, the, the buses don't run anymore. They're very infrequent. So there was physically no way for me to get there. Um, so I couldn't go, and I was so bummed. But I got home, and my roommate, she had gotten to go. Um, her name's Anna. Um, she's a fantastic illustrator now. 
um, she had gone, and she's like, oh yeah, he was doing this really cool thing with a flow brush. I've never seen it before, and no one's ever painted like this. I'm like, ah, oh, I wish I could have gone. So, you know, fast forward, you know, three years in the future. Um, so like, it wasn't like this happened overnight. Um, so I'm sitting in this job, everything is crazy insane. Um, and I'm like, like, I didn't want to do this. Like, this is not, not the career I want to do. I just did this because I was just, you know, I agreed to do it and I'm not going the direction I want to do. I really want to go back to doing concept art and digital painting. There was that guy who did the really cool painting method. I wonder if he has any videos uh, and it was funny because my one friend, uh, Scarlett, who had texted me about uh, your um, you know, workshop you were doing, she had just like sent me your name in, in my phone. And I don't feel like I'm bad about deleting text messages. So like I scrolled down through like three years of message threads, find Scarlett's message. And it's one of those things like it's almost like a sign from the universe because there's a blank message thread and all it just says is Bobby Chu in there. So I just I typed this name into YouTube and all these two stream videos come up and I just start listening to them as I'm working during the day. Um, and it's really funny because I had to be really secretive about it too, uh, because, um, and I don't want to scare any of the young artists out there, but the place I worked at was literally insane. Um, one of the artists that I worked with got fired for seeing Star Wars on his time off. Like they were insane. Uh, so I'd be really sad. I didn't want anyone to know that I was like trying to change my art career. I was trying to better myself. So I would like hide my tab and like just listen to two streams as I worked. Uh, and that's like, that just got me through it. And, but it, it worked and I just kind of kept, I always come back to it. Um, and it helped me a lot just mentally. Cause if you're in an environment like that, it obviously it's going to take a mental toll on you. Um, but I started like learning about all these other artists and kind of like what things they went through and how their paths were never linear. And how and also i just kind of learned who they were um it was funny because you know i didn't know what anyone's art looked like for the longest time i was hearing about all these like famous artists like craig mullins and nathan Fowkes, and i had no idea what anyone's art looked like because i couldn't watch the streams i could only listen to them because i was hiding the screen while i was listening to them <laughs> <laughs> um, so i didn't know what anyone's stuff was but i just i learned all these people and just yeah just kept going with it <laughs> that is such an awesome story Holy smokes. I have a winding path to get here. <laughs> and then now you're on the actual thing that you were watching or whatever years ago, oh, well. right? Yeah, well, it's like I said, I could never participate or like do anything in the chat. So it's like I was always like there, but no one ever knew I was there. <laughs> well, yeah, with this, you know, with magma, because you can paint together and for those of you that don't know you can paint together with up to 30 people at the same time for free uh it's you know a software that we really hope will change art education the art community art in general and just bring people together um especially during this time you know it's extra important and reaching out to people that you know live alone and things like that anyways um the other thing i i want to kind of touch on is just like that we are trying to be this very encouraging community this isn't competition even though you see cj Massey and i were painting side by side and you could look at it as a competition or something but that's totally not how we're looking at it because CJ is CJ and I'm not CJ. I'm not going to compete to try to be a better CJ than she is or Massey and so forth. It's just interesting to see how we all approach things in a different way. And being able to paint together is crazy encouraging if you want it to be, right? Like so many times we we're just mentioned, we we're just talking about um, stressing in the beginning, right? If our painting isn't doing well, things like that. But magma actually, because we're painting together, we don't stop, right? And that by itself is very encouraging. Anyhow, um, our, our Discord channel, you guys wanna jump in here? You wanna chat with us? You know, feel free. Hello, I'm hey. Gabriel. Hey, um, Gabriel. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, doing some schoolism courses right now. I'm kind of hopping in between the Terrell Whitlatch and the uh, 
drawing workshop from Ian McKay. It's just been so amazing. I just want to say how grateful I am for uh, what you've done for the art community. And you've changed my life already just with all the free content, let alone the, the, the service you give on schools. Um, oh, man. I, I, do, <laughs> I do have a question. Um, I failed my driving test this morning. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Didn't you say you were like, getting some sleep today? I, I, I tried, but I, I, I couldn't quite get to bed. I was nervous. Uh, I failed my driving test, and um, I, I noticed how much I just freaked out, and I got so angry at myself, and, and, and I realized I'm just like, oh, my God, you're crazy. How could you fail? And for, I gave myself no time to practice. I took the written test, and then I scheduled the driving test for the next day, and I hadn't even looked at the course. And I don't know what I was thinking, and it made me realize, like, I have no tolerance for failure for myself, and I expect myself to just get it right the first time, even if I have no idea what I'm doing. And I've just been reflecting on how that's been really not so good for my art education. It's, it's helped me leap into new areas, but it's, it's really uh, harmed my ability to finish projects because I, I go in so hard, and then I crash and burn so hard, and then I just try again with a new thing. And I think there are some benefits to that. but. You know, um, I guess my que my question is like, do you have any tips on embracing failure or, or I I don't know. I have <laughs> tips on what you're saying. I think yes. like the one, because, I you know I grew up very much like that. Like, perfect was the goal, a hundred percent was the goal, ninety nine percent, and it's like ah I almost got it. You know I wasn't even happy really, right? And I'm still kind of like that. But the focus has changed. It's not the result, it's the process. So like, are you trying your hardest? That's your goal. Because that's totally in your control. It's not the result of your drawing in the end. Did it turn out good? Did it turn out bad? It's more like, did you, were you trying hard? Were you getting frustrated and you still sat there and you worked through it? Because that's what we are doing all the time with these 90 minute workouts. Every single one we've mentioned our frustrations and every single one we stayed there, right? And that should be the goal. Once you do that, then all of a sudden you take control of your life too, because now you can succeed every day if you like, right? Even if, the objective of why you're doing the thing that you're doing fails, you still succeeded because you tried your hardest. And I know that might sound corny, but the thing about this is there'll always be ups and downs, but as long as you're generally heading in the right direction, you're doing amazing and life is going to get better and better. So as long as you're constantly putting in the effort and you are constantly kind of rethinking your approach is this the right approach okay it is i'll keep going or is this the right approach i've been trying for a while it's not really working can i do something different if you're constantly doing that then you'll always succeed while still um satisfying that part of you where it's like i need to get everything perfect i need to hit everything right on the dot every time right make it about your effort Does that make sense? Um, I, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Missy. Yeah, I just wanted to add. Um, I think for me, I had the the complete same feeling, um, especially when I first started projects at the studio, where um, I would work for uh, bigger companies, and at that time, I didn't really do much. Uh, I didn't like practice much. I didn't really produce that much art for myself, so that like pretty much I wasn't prepared to do these big projects so when i felt like i failed and crashed and burned like i obviously put a lot of um uh, pressure on myself i would tell myself like oh i'm you didn't do a good job but then uh, i guess this year i really realized that like doing these kind of like studies and doing a lot of um small challenges or small assignments for myself and kind of learning like some are successful some are not so successful Building that tolerance of like you know quote unquote failure has helped me um, like uh, be okay with uh, not doing so great on certain things. So I think uh, like yeah, it's like what Bobby is saying. Uh, if you're going through the right path and you know you're 
you're doing so, like, you just have to, like, stick with it and um, just, like, keep going through it. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. That was, so, that was actually really helpful. I really needed to hear that. You're going to do great. Just stay on that path. Yeah. Put that big ass smile on your face and keep marching forward. <laughs> Always, man. Yeah. And thank you again for everything you do. I so appreciate it. It's our pleasure. Uh, I sometimes I picture life as with some eyeballs looking back at me, and it's like if I have every reason to not not being being. Uh, like not enjoying my life, not being happy, all that kind of stuff, but I am, and I put on that big ass smile on my face, then life looks at me and is like, oh shoot, yeah, uh, what I'm trying to do is not working, let them through, right? That's, that's how I kind of picture it. And it's been true. It's totally been true all of my life, a million things hitting me in the face, knocking me down. Um, but then I just put on that dumb smile and I keep going forward and, and uh, it always turns out. A couple times, you know, a few times, you might get knocked down again or three times when you totally didn't deserve it. And then every one of those times when I do get to that next level, when the clouds part and the sun starts to shine again, um, I see that the reward is that much bigger. So just keep going and actually Masai and I we've had a discussion about this too um, somewhat where it's like we talked about uh, you know we, we had some jobs that came in that we didn't really like and uh, where's the good jobs or whatever and then we had the discussion where it's like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter when the good job is coming mm -hmm. because we're secure and we're using our time wisely and we're constantly improving mm -hmm. so by the time that good job comes It'll be even better and that's exactly what happens yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah as long as we're we're being smart about it and kind of like taking that action rather than you know yeah blindlessly going like doing stuff i think it's really helpful yeah and in the end for me this is like i don't know a different part of me is just like and does it really matter what I'm saying is true does it really matter you know it, it, are you going to be at the end of your life you're going to be like you know I really wish I was just grumpy as hell you know like I really wish I didn't put on that big smile and I didn't proceed in a positive way because it didn't happen in the end or whatever and it's like nobody's going to think that right everybody's just going to be like i'm glad i did that even though i didn't i didn't maybe reach that mark or whatever i'm so glad that i put in everything i could into that because that's something that not a lot of us can do put everything into that goal yeah you'll, you'll definitely regret it more if you don't put in that like effort and that positive attitude Mm-hmm. And as uh, I start finishing that little um, that little spiel there, I look down and miraculously I've come back. I've come back from being behind of all you you guys, and I'm almost you know done my little rabbit there. Hey, Bobby. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Hey, Masse and CJ. Wonderful Hi, to see you. Hi. <laughs> uh, we always have love to have CJ around for the 90-minute challenge. Uh, she's uh, doing such a great job with uh, every challenge. It's like amazing. <laughs> uh, I wanted to also uh, see uh, chat with you guys. Uh, we are on Discord. Are uh, doing quite well with the bunnies. We have like some lovely pieces. Oh, fantastic! Um, yeah, so let's great take a job, look. Everyone. I really on like the here. one that Div made. It it looks like the the, the thing you you and Masay did like a while ago with the water combining. Challenge. Oh yeah! Oh wow! Cool. Oh wow! It's so vibrant. Ooh, Very. Out. Oh well. Huh. Yeah. Everybody's doing awesome. quite well here. Uh -huh. That's great. Great to see. 
Good job, everyone. Cool. And Erin is also drawing again. <laughs> nice to see you, Erin. Yeah, right on, Erin. Uh, All right, why don't we go on to another question, perhaps? Does anybody have any questions in Discord or anybody want to chat about anything in Discord? How do you guys get such um, soft textures in Buttermilk? Do you just do smaller brushstrokes or do you guys use texture brushes? Or... Um, there's, there's two ways to go about it. Uh, you can lower the hardness to get like a soft looking brush or um, I guess Bobby's technique where you lower the density and lower the opacity and use big brush strokes. Really yeah. Good about trying hard. Thank you. Also, you don't even need a hard edged uh, or a, a soft edge to kind of create that. You could just use colors that are very close together, tones that are oh. very close together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I actually did that in the next challenge. On Monday's challenge, I just used the pen brush, which was just a, a solid square with a, a bit of a low opacity so that the, the, col the color and the value were so close to each other that it looked like it was a soft brush, but it was just a hard brush. Yeah, that was really cool. That was very, um, it, that was inspiring to see. I, I kind of yeah. thought, Hmm, should I grab that brush too next time? I didn't, but <laughs> I thought about it. I thought about it. <laughs> Keep that one in mind for the future. Pull it out later. Yeah. But what I did get from that was um, I need, like, I want to go full opacity way quicker next time. And just because that's what you were doing, Masse. And that's what everybody will see on um, Monday. This one, that's the one that Missy is talking about. It's a whole room, right? And that was just one part in that, uh, in the subject. And Missy was able to get down like all of it. Uh, and it was because, <laughs> well, it's because of many things, but one, one thing in particular was that you were going full opacity, right? For most of it. Yeah. For me, it- Trying to lay it, down everything. For me, like I like, I like that, but I only wanted it in the beginning, because um, it creates a certain look to it, right? Because everything mm -hmm. is hard edged. I want to yeah. finesse it a little bit, but I did absorb some of it. That's great. Yay! That's the best part <laughs> about this magma thing is you can like pick and choose what you want to take from other people. Playing with hardness has already helped me so much. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Nice. Right on. I have a, a question. Um, I was wondering if you could, if you were fine talking about, I guess, um, what was the most biggest burnout you remember and just what happened and how you got out of that? Oh, yeah. Um, I don't think I ever had mental burnout, but I've had uh a lot of stress <laughs> a lot of stress before um but i've had arm problems where i kind of burnt out my arm and it's just a lot of physio a lot of acupuncture a lot of searching for a solution uh, what about you you two yeah i actually um at the same job i was talking about uh before i had a traumatizing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, if you ever want to talk in private, there's some really wild stories I have from that place. Not all of them are safe for YouTube. It's, it's insane. But um, going going on, um, because it, it was it was, was so intense, and there's a lot of really um, questionable, sketchy things happening behind the scenes. I actually, at one point, towards the end, um, I almost had like a complete mental breakdown. Um, just I think I. I'm not, I'm not a psychologist, so don't take anything I say as like medical advice or anything, but I think what I had was like basically what's called an anxiety attack, which is different from a panic attack. It's like a longer um, instance. Um, I remember like I was like lying in bed like New Year's Eve and like my heart was pounding and like I had never gone through anything like that before and it was 
it was bizarre and like I couldn't think straight and like I didn't know what like what I was supposed to do or anything like completely lost like all my art sense on how to do anything and like the way I got myself out of it is one you do need to take time to focus on your mental health especially if you're in like a stressful situation like that you do need to take time to decompress and kind of separate yourself out of there um, and also what I started to do was just working on my own stuff because um, I was doing like so much of very intense work that wasn't really going anywhere and just constantly pouring creativity into things that weren't going anywhere um, that takes a lot out of you um, that leads to burnout very quickly um, especially in my case um, it was severe burnout um, and I do really want to preface that in that case that's why mental health is important because there were signs that something was happening that I was spending too much time in this unhealthy environment like I was having digestive issues and sleep issues so when you're getting to that point where you're having like these physical signs that okay burnout's coming you need to take a step back and do something about it so kind of avoid that from happening in the future but um, because to get myself out of it I would work on my own stuff and I didn't share it with anyone it was just stuff for me just as an artist um, and it just kind of refueled me creative, cre creatively and kind of remind me like oh yeah I, I do like this um, it, it doesn't always have to be this negative thing uh, which was what it was at that in that specific um, environment um, and that kind of just brought me back to like okay okay we're in a better space now and that kind of pulled me out of it I felt um, uninspired before and that was by the way again I, this is a really great stream because of UCJ it's really awesome insights and everything um, yeah I I was uninspired like earlier earlier on in the year as many of us were you know partially because of the pandemic it's like what's the point <laughs> you know that, that's what I was thinking right and of course there's totally a point um, so what I did was I, I took Iris Compete's uh, fairy workout class. You can see in like my previous posts on Instagram, there is a section where it's like a whole bunch of uh, paintings from Iris's uh, concepts. And that allowed me just to not really have to think about what I'm going to paint. I'm given the subject every day, and I paint it, and that's it. And because I did that, I feel I did something. I did something for my art, and it's like it's it's motivating, right? And and slowly, actually, it didn't take very long. It took like maybe sixteen days or so. I did sixteen paintings, and then I felt energized. I felt inspired again. I didn't want to paint any more of Iris's, you know, uh, drawings. I want to do some of my own, and that was the point. It got me right out of it. It's great. Yeah. And I feel like there's also a social media burnout where you feel like you need the that you need to put something online for people to see. But it's like what CJ was saying, when that happens, it's really important to just do things for yourself. It's not really meant for other people to see. It's it's like a great way to feel yourself. And Iris's uh, workout is probably like a great way too because it's like it's kind of like the idea is there for you. It's kind of you. Um, taking it and like uh, coloring it or doing whatever you want and adding that like creativity so that you can get the wheel or the ball rolling again and um, hopefully get back into stuff that you really want to show people. It's kind of like um, when we're kids or whatever and you traced, right? You traced your favorite mm -hmm. drawing and stuff and then when you're done, you're like, yeah awesome i like this you know like it's just these very easy kind of pick-me-ups right yeah 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 like um aside from these 90 minute challenge i also do like quick 20 minute studies for myself and i don't post them on social media or anything because it's just for me but like every time i finish it i'm just like yeah i feel a bit more confident it's like it's like I'm doing stuff and it's not necessarily being put out in the world, but I know that like at least like I'm doing some art to kind of like feel myself. Yeah. Uh, and I've seen them, everybody. She, it's true. <laughs> she has tons <laughs> of uh, studies that she does. And nobody sees them. And I got a bunch of paintings that I've shown um, 
in discord and things like that and then i never posted them you know it's a bunch of them i just deleted as well because i just didn't care yeah. uh, there was like an objective that i wanted to try out or i wanted to learn or practice and that was it it was all about the process it wasn't about the result yeah. anymore and, and sometimes, um, this is what I found for myself, is like, uh, if you do those kinds of things and when you don't show it out, uh, show it on social media, like years later, you might go back to it and like think, oh, this is a great idea. Maybe I'll like refine it and make it into a piece. So I think, um, yeah, building ideas, not for other people, but for yourself, it, I think that helps with like inspiration and like creating artwork you know uh anybody could feel free to jump into this conversation but i would just want to say like lately actually last couple of days i was thinking maybe i should make a an account like a facebook instagram whatever account and it's just for me and just post my art post my own stuff uh have it private i'm the only follower you know <laughs> Because then I can scroll back. I can scroll through everything and see kind of like a journal of my progressions and stuff like that. Mm. Stuff that mm. I don't think anybody would be interested in. I don't really want anybody else to... Like, I don't want to put on my own, like my main page, in other words. Cool. Side I interest. I actually had a t an idea like that. I oh, really? To make... Yeah, I want to make an ins because my name surname is Cook. I wanted to make an Instagram where I like made where I took my studies and made them into small little adventures, and then like write like a little paragraph next to them saying that they like what kind of adventure I went on today and like what kind of demon I had to face on that adventure. And I thought I was going to call it Overcooked. Oh. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> yeah. It's something. Yeah, there's something not part of my main account and just, I don't know, just see if I can write as well as I can draw. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't, do something like that. I don't have any plans to do this, but if I have more time, I totally want to do this, which is to start up a new account, paint totally differently, and just have an alias and see how it does, you know? <laughs> Can I go from zero back up the mountain again? Right? I think that would be fun. Yeah, I Ooh, thought about that. Video. You could do a video where you invite yourself to talk on the stream and you're like, ha ha, it was me all along. Yeah, the very end, right? The very end, it's like revealed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be really cool. It's just two videos and one of you is just wearing glasses and the other one is just regular. <laughs> <laughs> and I troll myself, right? And I'm just like, yeah. Bobby, uh, I don't know. Your, your style kind of looks like right. my style, and so on and so forth. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, that would be yeah. awesome. Okay. <laughs> the Scooby Doo so moment you where you just pull off the mask, as you know. <laughs> now you have those apps where, like, you can. Uh, face swap and stuff, right? Oh, yeah, like a filter or something? I don't know. I've seen videos on YouTube and stuff where they have like a different actor uh, in that trailer or whatever. It's like Tom Cruise instead of... Uh, oh, I, like the deep fake I think... Stuff. Yeah, deep I think fake I have stuff. I my phone uh, app like that. Let me just see. What that's oh. oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, but then you could do videos of this like totally <laughs> fictional... Uh, yeah, it's like, artist. <laughs> the app is called Reface. It's you can take like movie characters and then add your face to it, and then you basically yeah. have your face in a movie. But that is so dangerous. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, like, I'm not. You just bring it five years into the future. You know, having a bunch of smart people work on that. How much mm -hmm. stuff can you totally fake? I was talking with a a friend that is. Um, head of special effects where he is and i was like what do you think about all this technology like do you think you could fake yourself out right like you can make you can distort a video you can do whatever you could put a ufo in there and it tricks yourself like if you never saw the video and he's like yeah 
Mm. Yeah, totally. And then I was like, so if the the wrong kinds of people, you know, start developing their skills and stuff, could they, you think that they could totally, you know, put something out there that looks completely real? Yeah. That's scary. Mm -hmm. I feel like people do that. Yeah, I saw like kind of like a interesting theory about something similar. I was watching a show, I think it's like on the Discovery Channel called Mysteries of the Deep, and they're talking about like all these like mysteries about the ocean and the lakes and all these things that happen under the water. They're super weird. And there was one story they were telling about um, the U.S. Navy was out in the Pacific Ocean, just kind of like doing some practice maneuvers, and they saw these like weird objects like boiling underneath the surface of the water. And then all the, the report said, and all of a sudden, like this, like cigar-shaped object, like shot straight up into the air, and like was flying at like speeds that would not be physically possible, and then would just drop into the ocean and fly through, go through the ocean with all the like the um, friction. Like it shouldn't be able to go that far. Um, and one of the theories was, um, was it even real to begin with, or was it just the U.S. Navy just psyching out um, one of the other military powers, sort of like, because I guess they're, they're like had released patents on it and stuff. And it's like, well, why would the, why would the US patent the supposed technology that might be able to do this? And one of the theories was like, well, maybe they're trying to make it look like we have this like really cool technology mm -hmm. and all this like footage that they made was just used with special effects. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's real or not, but I thought like that was like, oh, I guess, I guess you could do that now. And I, I, I mean, we think about it because we just use it for like storytelling and all I'm like, Yes, there are other applications for using that. Oh, <laughs> I remember seeing a video years ago. So this is like technology has already surpassed this video by far. But um, yeah, put, put a little animal emoji, a bird emoji, if you saw this one in the chat. But um, it was of an eagle that swoops down and grabs a baby. And you are just horrified, that. horrified <laughs> watching mm -hmm. this thing. And it was totally fake. Yeah, it wasn't it a, like a student assignment or something like that. I have no and idea. And then they put it online, and then it just like blew up. It's like, oh, eagle picks up kid from the ground. Yeah. And like drops it. Yeah, I see one person definitely remembers that video. That was like that was years ago too. Yeah, that was that was like a long time ago. I saw a picture similar to that, but I wasn't too sure if that if it was that exactly. Because, um, okay, sorry, continue, sorry. I was just gonna say, uh, I think I saw, like, I didn't see the video, I think I just saw the video, like, behind, like, how they made it. Mm. Exposure to that. Yeah. There's another video, uh, a while back where it looked like some reality show or something, and this person had a watermelon in this giant slingshot. And she pulls it back, pulls it back, pulls it back, and releases it, and it doesn't go out. It swings right back into her face and knocks her over. This giant slingshot. And I was horrified again. But then later, a friend of mine told me he worked on that shot. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Totally tricked. <laughs> You don't know what's real and what's fake now. No. It's crazy, yeah. Well, shoot, mm -hmm. like, if I have enough time, uh, you know, I could paint something pretty freaking real looking. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Masei can too. So it's like, how many more of us can do that kind of stuff? Um, yeah. However, on the brighter side of things, you can see that there has been this huge swing in social media where it's like social media kind of justice, um, whether it's too much, you know, perhaps it's a little heavy, but it's going in a good direction, I think. And once we find that medium, it's going to make the internet a much better place. here i wanted to say uh, there are uh, there are some uh, developments made towards the deep uh, learning ais that are actually deep learning ais made to identify uh, deep fakes and uh, 
Oh. To spot out. Uh, yeah, they're mm -hmm. making AIs to detect uh, deep fake AIs because, uh, and they can detect fine noise patterns in the image and stuff like that, wow. and determine if that's real or not. And uh, there was like a crazy paper on a, on a deep learning AI that uh, that was like 90 or more percent accurate. Uh, mm. Well, that's good to hear. However, yeah. it's like this the kind of um the part of me that's always looking for but what about this what about that goes like but who's looking out for those guys who's in charge to make sure that they are saying the right things you know i don't know um you know like like uh the police have um what, another department that is kind of policing the police whether they do a good job or not, I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to get into it, but there is a thing, right? So who's the thing that really polices that that fake kind of analysis thing, I wonder? Uh, there are also um, sites where you can upload photos and then it, you can have it go through all these different kind of variables to see if the photo is fake, right? It'll analyze oh. the size of the noise in your photo to see if any other parts of the noise um, are different, right, in the like photo. Photoshop? Uh, you know, like or if you took a photo, photo, you're gonna have a bunch of noise, a bunch of like, yeah. you know, the pixels and everything, but say you Photoshop something else in there, right? It's gonna oh. have a different pattern of noise and then it'll light up in this, um, like you can see it very clearly. Yeah. That is crazy. I think there's a couple, uh, a couple, sites like that where you can mm. upload a photo and see see what happens oh. interesting stuff interesting <laughs> stuff <laughs> you know and back in the day when i watch cartoons i know they're cartoons what is it like for a child now to watch something like moana where the water looks like water her hair looks like hair. She's moving around. There's, there's all of the proper textures and lighting. You know what must that be like for them? You know. Oh yeah, they must think it's like a real world, like maybe in a different like dimension or universe. Yeah, and the other part to this is like. Um, maybe. Go ahead. Oh, oh, like when you mention um, what would be the childhood now, and um, it kind of reminds me that um, nowadays um, when when you tell, like I have an art teacher that she tell me that nowadays when you um, teach children art, and then you ask them to draw a butterfly, like a real butterfly, then they say um, no um, the real butterfly have four eyes or something like that because that and then have a big smiley face like the cartoon I watch mm. and then mm. when you um, trying to explain to them and show them the real butterfly picture saying like look this is the real butterfly picture but then the, the children um, cry in front of my art teacher and saying that, no, this is not true. The, <laughs> the butterfly that I know is in my cartoon that um, they have a big smiley face. It's not like that. And then they cry. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, so, it, and then it, it kind of a bit um, different when you ask them to draw a chicken they draw a drumstick <laughs> and they do not know what is a uh, chicken because for them chicken is you know like fried chicken thing. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah so she uh, my art teacher had a uh, quite a hard time so I, I don't know if that's applied but uh... I remember seeing a video about this little kid finding out that his chicken McNuggets are made f out of chickens and it freaked him out. You know, it's, I guess that's kind of different, but kind of the same, the same time. It's funny how 
like once you have that context it could change your whole perception of whether or not you like the thing you know especially with food mm. right mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah uh, i remember taking one of my buddies to sushi for the very first time in his life Ooh. and it was like 2 30 in the afternoon so he is starving we were coming <laughs> back from a long drive and then I start ordering stuff because he doesn't know what to order. I'm like, all right, I'll order for both of us. And then I say something, 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 something. And then I say, and a spider roll, please. And then the lady's like, okay, spider roll. You know, and, and then um, brings it back, puts it on the table, spider roll, enjoy. And then my buddy is like, what'd she just say? And I said, oh, yeah, spider roll. And I was like, you see the legs sticking out of the these two pieces there that's, yeah that's the spider right because it's all fried and it's a crab but he doesn't know and he thinks it's a tar tarantula uh, and he's starving and it took him so long to eat that one piece yeah oh but the legs are the best part i know <laughs> but it totally look if you think about it it looks like a yeah. freaking tarantula if, if i told you know. that yeah it's the right it's the right size yeah and then i i'm such an idiot i i didn't tell him that it was a crab i've just forgot and then years later years later after the, well, the man has like kids and stuff hours later. years later he tells me yeah you remember that time i ate a spider with you at that sushi restaurant none of my friends believe me but i know you know <laughs> and i was like <laughs> Oh, and then I finally told them, and it's like, oh, great. But about that, I meant to tell you something. <laughs> it's like all, all these years yeah. I've been telling people I, I eat tarantula. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just funny how, like, it took him so long to be, like, okay with it, and he thought it tasted good, yet he would never eat it again. <laughs> all right. <laughs> the perception, yeah. All right, um, why don't we talk about this painting a bit more because now there's a rubber duck going on. I forget why we put the rubber ducky there uh, or you I did. I think we were, talk we were talking to some people on Discord and then we were just talking about rubber duck. I don't remember why, but um, someone was like, oh, can someone put a rubber duck in it? So I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> so I Googled the photo go. and see like how the subsurface scattering works. I don't know if I captured it well, but I just threw it in there. We were talking about the thing where if you give a design to a client and you give three different designs and the other two are not so good, and then the one that you actually like is good, put a duck on it and the client. Oh, right, right, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone also mentioned about, what was it, getting a rubber duck to talk to about your problems here. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well it was okay, yeah the conversation was kind of like putting in a red hearing into the stuff that you really want to get approved so that when they look at it they go yeah it's practically there just get rid of that red hearing you know and like um i've heard that with directors as well where they will give an extra violent whatever scene if they want to get that violent part across they'll just make it extra violent and then um negotiate and go okay yeah we'll dial it down fine we'll dial it down dialing it yeah. down to the exact level that they wanted right mm -hmm. i remember hearing a story about brad bird doing that as well with incredibles somehow i forget but i it, it stuck in my head where it's like Oh, that's interesting that he would ask for things that he didn't want because of the things that he really, really wanted. Mm. Anyhow. Um, I have a question for CJ. <laughs> All right. Um, so I, so um, I, I'm, I'm Wina. I think we, we talked before. Um, 
The thing is that why I just remember that um, you said you starting as a um, drawing vector art for toys. Mm-hmm. And that is basically what I had been doing um, also for the um, for the footwear and everything like that. And then I'm just wonder that how do you come to a point that you can paint such a artistic style and forget the vector point work since they are quite structured. Mm, yeah, well, for me, I mean, the reason I went with the more painterly style is because that's what, whenever I see art, that's what always kind of pulls me. That's what I always react to. Um, so I really want to be able to do that, to kind of be able to kind of communicate art the way I wanted it to. But um, yeah, it's not something you just kind of sit down and decide, like, I'm just going to do it this way one day. Um, I did it by, I learned. I, um, I actually, I think I mentioned this to you, Bobby, um, last week. Um, I, when I decided I wanted to do that, I went, I started, I went out to schoolism and I started with uh, Jonathan Hardesty's Essentials of Realism class. Um, because especially when you're making that big of a change, because, you know, vector art and then, you know, painterly style couldn't be more. Yes. Um, I thought about like, okay, if I'm going to learn to do this, I want to learn how, I really want to understand how it works. I want to understand it at the core because a lot of times when I had tried drawing digital painting before, before I really committed to it, you'd see a lot of things on YouTube and a lot of it was like different, like little tricks you can do, like, oh, do this for good lighting or like, just add this overlay layer and do in this, 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 and steps um, do all the time, but I wanted to, I didn't want a lot of tricks. I wanted to fully understand what I was doing. So in the future, when I wanted to paint something, I could figure out how to do it myself um, and understand it. So I sat down, I thought like, okay, what's the most logical way for me to really learn this and understand it? So that's why I started with that class. And I just kind of have been progressing from that point because um, if anyone's taking this class, you know, he starts with the fundamentals. And even though it's not a digital painting class, the fundamentals are the fundamentals no matter what medium you use. So even though it's not painting, I'm like, okay, this is going to push me in the right direction. So I'm going to start with this one. I love um, this one particular assignment where I don't know if it's his daughter, but it's this cute little girl, mm-hmm. and you have to mm-hmm. change the hue. Right? You yeah. can't paint the photo by matching the colors. That one was really good because you have to rethink yeah. every color that you're doing. Do you remember do you remember that one? Yeah, I remember doing that one because I remember because um, it's like a two part one because he starts with the um, he has like the one with the, the, the polka dot fabric and the different colored balls and you paint that one first. I had done a mm-hmm. warm one for that one. That one had gone pretty well. And I was pretty happy with it. So I'm like, I'm gonna do a cool color one for uh, the picture of oh, Violet. Wow. And it was, it was so hard. And then I got to the end. I'm like, I made Violet Violet. That was not intentional. I'm like, <laughs> oh gosh. I'm like, I'm like, I was like, I was like so focused on the colors. I forgot to pay attention to how the whole piece was looking. I'm like, I turned her purple. I turned his daughter purple. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, I actually see it. It's, can I put it on screen? Yeah, I put it on screen. This one right here, oh. right? That's um, awesome. Yeah, that's it. Yep, I turned violet violet. It is that really totally neat works. though. Yeah, because yeah. she doesn't look like a purple person. Yeah. Right. That's awesome. And the hair yeah. looks like it's blonde hair, but it's not blonde, as well. Yeah, I think. And I think that was like one of the best things I got out of that lesson. He's like, even if you go with these like very, you know, almost different color schemes, if they're all working together relationally, it still works. I yeah. Mean, her skin is violet. Her her hair is green light there. Completely. Um, and this is the other works. one you're talking about as well. Right? Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Right on. Yeah. All right. Well, it looks like we are all done. Any last, uh, let's have some last little comments about, you know, the experience here. Um, I could start off, you know, I, I, like I said, I would have loved to put in more color variations in the beginning. However, I did get to do that in the end. It was getting, it has been getting better and better 
where it's like even if I feel behind or I am behind in the beginning compared to everybody else like um, that stress it goes away after you just keep doing it and you trust in the process and you know it's going to turn out well and in the end I, I still had time to put in the flowers as well as some color variations and a little leprechaun so yeah yeah, I was I was kind of happy with this. This is like low hanging fruit, and Bunny Wizard gave us the thumbs up as well. gave us gave it a difficulty of nine, uh, so I felt pretty good about this. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going faster and faster with the quality and uh, how much you can add. It's really cool to see. Thanks, thanks, Patricia. Thanks. <laughs> I, I wish I didn't spend so much time on the the background actually like because it's so out of focus it's like it doesn't mm. matter as much so that's what that's my comment on my own piece yeah if, if, if i were to change anything um now that i'm looking like, like, like oh i wanted to put more warm tones on the bunny because i was really going for that really like light and springy precious little bunny thing i'm like oh it got it got kind of cool towards the end i'd like to fix that and then the other thing I would have would have changed is like you guys put like fun little things in there. Like I remember because like I, when you guys were drawing them, I was zoomed in trying to fix the ears, and then I zoomed out. I'm like, oh, they did something fun. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do it. <laughs> well, it, it was wonderful painting with you. I I feel like we should do this again uh, at some mm -hmm. point or another, but. Um, that's all the time we have today. So I want to thank everybody that joined us for the stream in YouTube, in Facebook, in uh, Discord, and of course, our amazing crew on Discord, Patricia, Yen, Kofi, Nico, uh, Noah, and uh, of course, Jamie in YouTube and Facebook. Thank you, Jamie, for always helping out. And the biggest shout shouts out go to uh, my co-host, Masse Seki, go follow her on Instagram. And CJ Ellison, go follow her on Instagram. Thank you guys for, for hanging out and uh, such a wonderful conversation. Thank you for inviting me. I had a great time. Awesome. And definitely come back, everybody, for Monday's stream with Harry. It's going to be a tough one. But, hey, do whatever you can. You know, it's all about putting in that effort. It's not about the result. The results will come when you keep doing the effort. Concentrate on enjoying the art, the process of art more than the result, and you will become more productive. So come back to us uh, on Monday and we'll be painting with you. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>